On this graph, as I said, I'm pretty happy with the fact that it's drawing my lines properly, it's labeled, but the reality is that often we like to use color to show differences between data. So in this case, if I go to my command and I use the color tile to pick a different color, then it's going to change everything that this command is drawing. Uh, I can change the point style, I can add a different color for the fill if I like, but again, it's doing that for every point and uh, everything that's drawn from this command. So what I'm gonna show you how to do is how you can use the commands to specify what data is actually drawn in that command without having to change the data or move the data around in the data table at all. Um, this is what we call using a mask. Before that, I want to just start by adding another graph that I'm going to use to do this, uh, <laughs> to graph this data in. So first of all, how do I add another graph into my user, user interface? I can click a plus button here. I can click the add graph button here. Um, I can also go under file, new graph and say standard graph. That creates a second thumbnail and I can just navigate between the two of these. Um, and once I have this new graph, rather than starting from scratch and re, uh, recreate my plot command, it's really important to realize that all of these commands that you create are all things that you can copy and paste from one graph to another graph. So I can select this object, I can copy that to my clipboard, go to another thumbnail, and then I can paste that object in. It's very easy then to move these commands around and be able to reuse them. Uh, whether you're gonna change the data, or you're gonna change the formatting, this is something I do all the time in Datagraph. Now the other thing that you can do, that's a very handy way to not have to recreate everything in this graph, is to actually clone the graph, make an exact copy of it. You can do that by selecting this thumbnail and you would say, um, file, new graph, clone current graph, that will do it. Or hover your mouse over the thumbnail and you'll see on the left hand side, there is bottom left, there's a plus button that actually creates a blank graph just to the right of this thumbnail. But just above that is a clone button. If I click that, now I get an exact copy of my graph. Um, so either of these would work. If I decide I want to get rid of this one, I can again hover my mouse, click the X in the top right corner that deletes the graph. And in here, the objects for the labels, maybe I'm not going to use them this time. I'm going to use color instead. So I can just highlight those and hit the delete key. And now those are gone. So how do I take this one command and select a subset of data? That's what, we again, we use masks for. And to access the mask, I'm going to expand my command out so I can see all of the options that are here. And you'll notice in, in pretty much every command that draws data, there'll be an option for use as mask. And by default, it will say draw all. This is something that is a drop-down menu that will have all my columns within my file being shown here. You can also see there's a little green arrow to the left that points to whatever column I'm highlighting. This is really convenient once you have a lot of data in your file. Um, anyway, I can go ahead and select what I want. And here I'm going to mask based on the type. So I select the type and I'm going to say when the type matches, so I have this menu of all these different ways I can mask data uh, using numerical uh, data. I can use the, the mathematical symbols uh, to create a logical statement. But for text, I'm going to use this option of matches. And then I can type in, or actually, I don't need to type again. I can right click, copy, control, come over here and paste it. And now I'm only plotting the data that corresponds to all of these rows uh, here <laughs> where I have my control. Okay, and now I want to make a, another command that will draw the other set of data. And again, I don't have to redo this command. I can copy and paste it. Or my favorite thing to do all the time is to hold down the option key, 
click an object and drag it, you see how you see this little plus symbol? That is a clone option that makes an exact copy of this command. Now if I expand this one, I can change the mask from being based on the word control to being based on the word experiment. Now I have two separate commands for each set of data and I can change the colors as I like to show my two data sets. Okay, so that I'm pretty happy with, but maybe now I need to add a legend. How will I do that? Well, I'm going to add a legend using the legend command. Again, everything on your graph is gonna be some type of a command that adds elements to it. So if I click this, it's automatically adding a legend but one thing that it does when you have the same column is it doesn't necessarily repeat the legend. There's cases where this is exactly what you want, but in this case, even though I have the same data, I want them both included in my legend and to show those different colors. So what I need to do is expand both of these. And to make this easier to navigate, I wanna show you another really, uh, really helpful thing that I do all the time. And that is to go under the view menu you can use the swap layout option and that will put your commands on one side and your data on the other side. The other thing that you can do, which we have not done yet, is you can hide this data panel over on the left hand side. If you go to this button here, that's one way to hide it. You can click the X that's in the top left of the panel itself or there's also a shortcut that I use all the time of Command D, you click that and it closes it. Command D opens it back up again. This is a very, very handy shortcut to be aware of. Okay, so what I wanna do here is I want to expand both of these commands and then I can show you where you set the legend. Now to do this, I told you before how you can click the top left corner that will toggle commands opened and close but there's another nice uh, shortcut to be aware of where you can do a lot of them at one time. If you select multiple commands, so I just click and drag to select more than one. If you use your right arrow key, that will open them up and your left arrow key will close them again. Let's go ahead and open them back up. And what you'll see, I want you to notice the bottom of this command and pretty much, again, most of the commands that draw data, you'll see that at the bottom is where the legend settings are. And by default, this is using what we call a token. It is set to the Y label, meaning whatever the title of this column is, which currently is just Y, that's what you're gonna see in my legend. But I can just highlight this token if I like and delete it. And instead, I'll put the word control right there. So now this shows up in my legend and I can do the same thing for the word experiment. Stick that in my legend and now I'm pretty satisfied with that. Now there's a lot of other options for this plot command that we're not gonna talk about right now, but just to give you a general sense, again, as you start to go through the commands, you'll see there's often this use as mask is sort of in the middle of all these options. And then you'll have options that are above that that are very specific to a given command. And then below that is where we tend to keep all the options related to labels and legends. Um, so the more you get used to the program, the more that you'll kind of expect where things will be located. Anyway, I'm going to select these and again, close those up. And the last thing that I want to point out here is where the legend is located because right now you'll see that the legend is located and it's hovering over my data. So by default, the legend will play, be placed in the top right corner of your data. And if you look on the legend command itself, there is a where option and an anchor option. Whenever you have uh, something like a legend that is not placed based on an XY coordinate location, Instead, it's based on a pixel location where you have an anchor for your graph and then you have an offset. So you'll see here, here's the anchor, here's the offset. If I want this anchored in a different corner, I can change this menu to be in the upper left, lower left, lower right. 
or back to where I was in the upper right. Um, and it will, every time it's gonna have the same 10 by 10 offset because that's what's in this corner. Now these objects are dynamic. I can click and drag this around and move it to a new place. But just be aware that if you clicked and drag it to this corner, and then I make my graph wider, it is still anchored over here to the right side unless you change this anchor menu. So I'm gonna move this to upper left, drag it to where I want it, and now if I expand this graph or change the size, it's just where I want it to be.